Today I'll explain how to recruit all the characters that were added in the remaster, all in order of how early you can get them. Number 1. Monica. Simply finish the Neville's Request quest and enter Monica's house. This will let you get her, provided that you have an empty party slot. You've done so much. Returning the favor is the least I can do. I don't mind getting my hands dirty when I need to. She's quite a bit stronger than Jian, and I like her. Number 2. Marina. During the Underwater Temple quest, if you have a free party slot, you will be able to recruit her. The dialogue gets changed a bit, even if it feels a bit odd. My prayers are with you. If you didn't have a free party slot during the quest, then don't worry. Everything will look exactly how it did on the PS2, and afterwards you'll be able to find Marina at North Point, so getting her isn't a skippable thing. Hello! It's good to see you again! Oh, really? Thank you so much! Sadly, she has some gear and a class that are locked upon her. The latter only increases the chance for you comes benediction to trigger. I suppose at least the gear thing could be overcome with glitches, uh, but I would still say she's not that great. Number 3. Lady Flamar. Complete the Theodore's Madness quest. The time is at hand. Saruin will return. Make sure to come back to Weiserheim. And later, visit her at her tower. So shall it be. I will follow the threads of fate and see where they lead. Sadly, I wouldn't say she's that exciting in terms of strength, but she has some fans online from what I saw. Also, as an interesting note, if you have Freelay on your team, you won't be able to recruit her. Freelay can see you through better than I ever could. I shall remain here, hoping for your safe return. And this works the other way around, too. If Lamar is with you, then surely you do not need my aid. I shall remain here, hoping for your safe return. Oh, and by the way, I checked. If you have Lamar already in your party during the Obsidian Sword quest, you will not be able to get free Lay Dan either. They thought of that. Helping me, I could use a hand fighting Saruin. If Lamar is with you, then surely you do not need my aid. I will go see Flamar. It has been too long. Number four, Sheila. You need to complete her entire quest line, beat Shirak, and then after the fight. You have to tell her to wait and give her the diamond. 
She'll then be at the taverns, able to teach you some sorcery, or join you if you have a free party slot. Ah, oh, so we meet again. Time to test the limits of this form. Now we're talking. She's quite powerful. She is forced to have the diamond as her ring, but it's not that bad in all fairness. If you take her to the Ten Fates on Sarween fight, she will give up the ring at the altar, willingly, letting you replace it with something else without the need for glitches. Admittedly, her major downside is that uh, to recruit her again next playthrough, you will have to go through that whole fight once more, which admittedly can be done really early in the remaster with no restriction to wait until end game, um, and it is doable since you get to keep the stats and characters by using the New Game Plus option, but I still found the idea really repetitive, so I decided to not go through with that plan. However, it is absolutely advised to get her in your party at least once to unlock the new Prophet class, which lets you see what mode the enemies will be in, which is uh, quite useful for stuff like the Ten Fates on Serene fight. The class will be available in North and South Estamir for both learning and switching. And finally, Aldora. Or should I say, TRUE Aldora, the character whom we only saw at the very end of the PS2 game. You can actually recruit her, and she's um, the most cumbersome to get. For one, you need to get Dark unlocked, which uh, can still be tricky. I failed on my first playthrough. Then you need to clear the game with Dark on the Aldora path, which will take a while, and only then, on your next playthrough, will you be able to recruit her, as she shows up where Dark would, and uh, they randomly replace each other. I don't think she's too impressive, especially since she doesn't get to keep what she learned as Dark, meaning that uh, you once again start all over. But her storyline is the big new feature of this remaster, so you might as well go through with it. Admittedly, you can see most of it really early on. The places to visit are all listed in her quest log entry. An additional bonus comes from beating the jewel beast with her on your team. It gives you a bejeweled shield as a reward and unlocks a special scene in the Isthmus Keep with a reward in the form of Aldora's stuff. Fun fact, at the start of Albert's playthrough, the room where the stuff is in does look differently than it did on the PS2. Finally, there's a special treasure at the bottom of the Purgatory as well, if you'll bring True Aldora there. And if you're starting to devise plans on how to enter the Netherworld, then don't worry. If you're at rank 20 or higher with True Aldora on board, Pyrex will let you enter the Netherworld, ignoring all other requirements. Pretty convenient considering the annoyances of dealing with the favor to Sarawin, although I don't think I'd be able to give up on killing Galahad. Oh, and uh, there are some extra cutscenes with True Aldora not mentioned in the questline that you can see in my video on the topic. Admittedly, I did miss a few in my original video, so I'll try to make up for it with a follow-up in the future. So please, look forward to it. That would be all for today. Thanks for watching.